glue sniffers and screw snippers and welcome back to Blitzkrieg Modelworks. I'm Bob, you know me as Darklin Forums. How's it going everybody? So today we're going to do a quick inbox review of the amusing hobby Yag Panther 2. Sorry for the glare from the overhead lights. This is the first Panther 2 variant in 135th scale in plastic since Dragon's 1994 release. So I'm very excited to, uh, to look at this. I've already had a chance to go through the box. It looks really cool. The tracks are frigging nuts. Um, I'm probably going to lose more than a few hairs that I don't have available putting those things together. Uh, the closest that we've ever seen to a Yag Panther 2 was FCM's old Panthers or Store conversion that I showed you when I uh, did the, the caption announcement. Uh, which is on hold until I get this thing done. Um, and that was a uh, conversion for Tamiya's Panther series. Uh, you, primarily the Steel Wheel G, but you could use them on anything. So this one is a totally, um, totally new kit. Um, the suspension has been corrected and it's accurate. I compared it to the uh, Panzer Trax 5-4 on the, the uh, Panther F and the Panther 2. Um, so the suspension has been correct because the Dragon one's a bit out. Um, the way the engine deck is designed is actually kind of logical. Although the, as you'll see in the review, inbox review, the, the uh, hatches for the driver and the radio operator are awfully flippin' small. So let's get to the, uh, to the review. I'll just change the camera angle and just bear we with me for a second. We have the instruction manual. It's 12 pages, 15 steps. Nice color front. We have a sprue map including all the photo etch. Step one starts with the uh, torsion bar suspension and some details. Much nicer done than the old Dragon set. And in reference to the Panzer Trax uh, Panther II booklet from Jensen Doyle, the location of the suspension arms are actually accurate, whereas Dragon's are totally out to lunch. I'll show you when we get to kit parts about that. Putting on the road wheels, now there's no poly caps, but the way that they've done this, you could make these still workable. Oh, and the swing arms themselves, if you only glue in the locking tabs, which go into the opposite side, there's a keyway on the opposite side, you can actually make the suspension arms somewhat workable. So we go from the suspension, uh, by the way, the idler is not adjustable without work. It actually keys in with a D-shaped um, peg into the lower hull. They do tell you how many tracks to do later on you'll see. Um, but if it's messed, if you don't have the right amount, I mean it's a sag track, you can easily make up for it. So then you have the rear hull plate, which offers an openable rear hatch with uh, interior detail. There is no interior in the kit. There's a multi-piece jack, which actually looks very nice. S typical stowage boxes, no different than most other Panthers that you built uh, with some photo etch clasps. They're fairly basic. They work fairly well. The spare track links um, with the hangers. The hangers are kind of clunky. You'll see that later on as well. Um, with some tool stowage on both the left and right hand sides more detailing. Uh, we start putting some of the photo etch on, and some of the engine deck and um, superstructure details. Multi-piece bow machine gun is really nice. Again, more hatches with, uh, they are posable um, with interior detail, but again, there's no interior in the kit. There's not even a breech for the gun. It's just a very simple um, Trunnion assembly. It is a one-piece gun barrel. It's plastic, but it's one piece. No rifling, unfortunately. Some more interior detailing. Just some final parts. Putting the gun, the uh, upper and lower hulls together and assembling the tracks. They give you a, a plastic jig for this. Very simplistic. Um, it'll certainly come in handy. If you have some other type of track assembly jig, it might be better because this is awfully short. And then at the very end, your final assembly with your side skirts and uh, your tow cables and some other small detail parts. Now one thing to note here um, is one of the photo etch pieces that they have is part Y which is a mesh set 
which if you look here, it's obviously for the rear section, but they don't mention it here. So I guess they presume you have to be smart enough to figure that out for yourself. But we'll uh, go through all the parts now and uh, see what else is going on. Okay, we got the upper hull, nicely cast, no interior. The weld seams are quite nicely done. You even get the, the torch cut marks with the welds. The upper engine deck. Hatches are awfully narrow in compared to a, uh, a regular Panther. There's the, the Dragon kit. They're quite a bit smaller. So I guess I guess at that stage of the war they were thinking the Germans would be quite a bit skinnier. Um, the intake and uh, radiator fan housings, especially the round fan housing, is quite a bit smaller. It's nice how they did the engine uh, access bay sideways. Uh, I'm going to have to see if the uh, Tamiya um, Panther engine would actually fit in there. The upper deck. Again, some very nice weld seam texture on the back and the sides. So that's the upper. Lower hull, all individual suspension, really nice. Uh, the torsion bar actually fits through the round slot and then pins into this square peg on the other side so you can actually make them somewhat workable. Unfortunately, as I said earlier, your idler wheel is keyed in place so you'd have to scoop that out and make it round if you wanted to make it adjustable. Um, much better detail uh, for the shock bumpers that go here and here as separate components uh, as well as they have the pin kicker. Now what the purpose of this little piece was the German tracks were pinned from one side, the pins would come in from the inside to go out. So as they worked themselves out, um, the tracks would come up along here and hit this and it would push the pins back into the tracks. A little bit of weld seam detail there. It's kinda nice. Now the upper actually, forgot to show you this. This thing will focus. There you go. Some nice weld seam detail there. So hopefully we can make that blend in. Okay, this is sprue A. This gives you uh, rear hull plate, matlet parts, gun barrel. That's your track assembly jig. It's awfully small. Uh, bow machine gun pieces, your multiple piece jack, engine deck covers, uh, lots of little doohickeys. Um, very nice cast texture. on those outside of the commander's hatch with some small knockout pin marks nothing nothing too serious nice one piece gun barrel no rifling unfortunately rear plate with service hole access that's a nice touch front fenders with some nice Flame cut detail. Again, fairly thick, but they've been uh, narrowed down at the edges. That's the inside of the uh, rear panel hatch. That's your outside. The antennas are pretty nice for molded styrene. Your fenders. Nothing fancy or special. I'm sure somebody's going to do some aftermarket soon. That's a nice touch. The fan for the uh, radiator intake. That's kind of a nice touch. You don't see that very often. Hopefully you get to see that through the photo edge. And the multiple piece jack. And the really nice jack block. That's going to pop with some dry brushing and some washes. That's going to look Next really sprue nice. is C-Sprue. You get four of these. These are the road wheels. Uh, torsion bar and swing arm, some hubs, um, track hangers, clevises, and a few other minor parts. These are the insides of the wheels. And they're all the same. The outsides. 
The outsides look pretty much the same as Dragon's. Um, not quite as nice as, say, um, um, Dragon's King Tiger, as opposed to their Panther II. Uh, or Mang or Tacom, they'd be a little nicer, but these are still pretty nice. Your separate torsion bars, which are a little disappointing because when you look at the sides, um, the detail is quite simplified versus how they're supposed to look. Up here, there's not a lot of detail, but I mean, they didn't slide mold it, it's just a two piece mold. But it's very disappointing that you have all these sinkholes. Now, if you position them right, you really won't see them because um, one of them on each of the sprues is, is okay for sinkholes, but it's still a little disappointing. It might have been, you know, considering the tiny little amounts, like these are your, your shirts and are your side skirt hangers that they molded in styrene. And that's pretty good. Um, and it's really disappointing that they maybe, you know, didn't make this piece here... Uh, one piece but actually had it recessed a little bit just on that part and have a, a separate piece that glues on that you can just blend in that would have been a lot nicer for that but otherwise it's uh, it's really nice very impressive and, and there's like I said there's no poly caps but if you glue the hubs on properly as per the instructions you can actually make the wheels work. Okay this is sprue P you only get one of these this is all your tools and uh, tow rope ends they're all right um, the fire extinguisher is actually quite nice but everything else is I'd say it's average um, the frames that go on the vehicle itself are, are pretty nice but the tools are average there's no um, there's no clasps detail at all there's just a band around all of them sledgehammer's got a bit of a sink mark not a big deal um, it's a little disappointing considering the rest of the detail level of the kit. They didn't put some representation of the tool clasps, but I'm sure that somebody will come out with a photo etch set for this thing fairly shortly. Probably Voyager. This is Sprue T. You get four of these. These are the tracks from hell. Um, very, very nicely molded. And you can make them workable. It would be quite the challenge because you have to take these intermediate links plus the end links. And you can see the tiny little pins that are on those. And then those get sandwiched into the main link. Let's see where they pin in. And then this piece is the actual cleat, the ice cleat part. And you glue that on top. I'm a little apprehensive. I can make all of these workable. They might be okay. They might be really nightmarish, but I'll give it a whirl. Um, but one thing that did really impress the heck out of me, there is not an ejection pin mark on any of these on either side. I am just impressed all the heck over that, considering how difficult this part would be to demold with all that deep detail. That's that's really impressive. So this is photo etch fret X. Um, this gives you your intake and radiator fan covers. Um, there is a sledgehammer tool frame, uh, the tool frame for something else. I can't remember what it was, and your toolbox class for your storage boxes on the back. So there. They're okay. They're a lot better than what Tamiya would give you. Heck of a lot thinner as well. Not as nice as, say, Voyager, Lion Roar, or Aber, any of those guys. But still, it's fairly decent for what it is. I'm going to do the next two frets. So as these one. are PE frets Y and Z, or Z for our American friends. These are the side skirts. Plain Jane, flat sheeting. Looks about the right scale thickness. And then the screening for the back sides. Now I'm not quite sure where you're supposed to hook them in. There's no indication where to go. So hopefully they just kind of slip over and everything kind of works. There's no mention of these, like I said, anywhere in the instructions other than the parts map. So that's all we have for that. This is the copper braided. This is the braided copper wire 
for the tow cable. Pretty nice. Works a lot better than plastic or picture wire. And this is the deco sheet. So you get two styles of crosses. Uh, register seems to be pretty good. And numbers one through zero in white outlined red numbers. They look fairly thin. Not, not too, too bad. No, no idea who actually prints these, but they look all right. And last but certainly not least, we have a four page color guide. Uh, all the colors are in MIG ammo colors. So we have a nice two color in white and duffel grab. And a nice kind of tritonal octopus pattern. More of a traditional tritonal. And then a two tone red, brown, and Uncle Grab. Okay, so that concludes the inbox review of Amusing Hobbies Yag Panther 2. I would very much like to thank Model Balconing for sending this to me so quickly. Uh, thank you, Niles. I really do appreciate it. I did pay for this. Uh, this was not a, a freebie that was sent for a review. I was very uh, in a hurry to get this. Uh, I do have the Panther 2 coming that's supposed to be released I believe they said mid-March so hopefully that'll be done I'm going to do a, a build review so right now everything's on hold for I'm thinking about a week to put this together because it looks about Tamiya quality build uh, other than those nutty tracks so hopefully I'll have it built and possibly painted in the next week week and a half okay thank you very much for watching uh, like and subscribe for more updates if you have any constructive comments please put it in the comment section below if you want to give a thumbs down Put a comment as to why. I'm very puzzled as to why guys will give thumbs down for videos and then not explain why you don't like something. So again, thank you very much for all of you guys that have subscribed. We're up to almost, I think, 350 or 360 subscribers. That's, that's awesome. Really appreciate it. Talk to you later, guys.